the functionalist perspective on family. I mean, anyway, you have to remember the func idea of functionalism is to ask the questions of what do does the subject of inquiry, in this case the family, what does it do in order to hold society together? How do, does it function to keep stability within the society? And this, of course, is um, from the uh, mindset or from the work of Emil Durkheim. And he actually would say that the family was a microsm, a small reflection of what happens in general society, where every part of society has a function to keep society together. Families do something, education does something, uh, doctors do something, any part of the of the of the uh, uh, society, whether it be economic or uh, or religious or governmental, has things to keep aside. Well, within the family itself, it also has functions. That there there are functions which are done, uh, and that would be the idea. You know, it's how do the members of the family keep the family together? How does the family itself keep the society together? That were, Those are the questions that we ask from a functionalist perspective. Um, of course, this was um, uh, developed in the American sociology by a fellow named Talcott Parsons, uh, and uh, he would talk about the same ideas but with different uh, nomenclature, different words. Um, there would, that there would be uh, some sort of instrumental role that the family was making uh, 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 that the um, uh, the husband would ha would do the actual deeds of the family, and that would he would play the instrumental role, bringing in money, um, making important decisions, uh, things like that. Whereas the um, the wife or the mother would be playing the expressive role, the emotional, the supportive role. Uh, so it would seem that these are complementary sort of. Uh, things now, of course, it is not necessarily always over all cultures. This is the way we can see it within Parsons' idea uh, when he was looking at the uh, the American culture. Um, but generally speaking, we can say in most societies and most cultures, the family serves a certain number of purposes, regardless of its structure. Um, for instance, the family. Uh, and family structure, the kinship system in general, not necessarily the family, but the kinship system in general, regardless of family, would actually uh, serve the purpose of regulating sexual behavior within the society. Uh, even in the most unusual of cases, there seems to be some sort of rules which uh, regulate who is allowed to procreate with whom and under what conditions. Um, and that's really, of course, has to be regulated in some some sort of way. Uh, way. Another aspect which uh, the kinship system, in particular, the family usually does, is socialize, socialization of the young. Children need to know how to learn the norms of the society. Uh, there needs to be some sort of body which is sanctioning either positive or negatively negatively uh, the uh, behaviors of children defining in-groups and out-groups. The family does this very well in a, as a primary group. Um, the family usually not only uh, gives some sort of support to the individuals um, in order to go and function within the site, to interact within the nuclear family, extended family, and the greater society. There will be conflict and there will be needs. Both of these are usually supplied by the family in terms of either economic support or emotional support. A healthy family will be able to support economically, make sure that there's food and clothing and shelter for its members, as well as emotional support to uh, take care of the trials and tribulations which come from the interaction, uh, not only within the nuclear family, the extended family, and the social structure at large. Um, and of course, there is a important idea for the preservation of the society and the culture is that the cultural standards and the cultural position of the family has to be maintained. In other words, there are things that happen within the family itself which maintains that family social status uh, across generations. Uh, one of the examples which I have given uh, before is that uh, in the socialization process of a um, working class family has a basic difference of the socialization process of a professional family in our culture. 
uh, the one of the important uh, structures that is general, and it's not a hard and fast rule like any of these things, but one of the general things that a working class parent wants to uh, um, socialize their children to understand is that if you want to keep a job, you have to be able to respect the boss. You need to understand that the boss says this, you need to respect it, otherwise you're going to lose your job. Um, and uh, this is a very important concept, which is given over to work from working class children, uh, parents to working class children. Now, obviously, if that's their mindset and the way to keep that's going to keep them with keep them a job. But on a, a on a professional uh, a professional family, where <coughs> they're um, they socialize the children not only to ask, but not only to obey and to be um, and to fulfill the wishes of the boss without too much questions, but also to question and to innovate and to be creative. Because if you have a professional job, that's one of the tasks. And so that is socialized into the children. Now, uh, of course, we know that there is movement between classes. And so part of this is happens when people of um, uh, the lower class learn uh, creativity and the ability to question, and sometimes going down is because you have children who really don't know any more than, or are not socialized uh, to um, to ask questions, but rather to be uh, obedient, and there's all sorts of factors within that, but generally speaking, that will keep a lower class family, a working class family, and a, at a lurking, working cl class uh, um, uh, mentality, and a professional class uh, family, and a professional class um a professional class a mentality. Now, um, that would could be called stability. Um, we can see that same aspect when we get to the um, uh, get to the conflict uh, perspective also. But we're gonna we just you know to summarize that the functionalist perspective is number one to find out how things are held together. Number one and number two, basically the um, the the things that they do um, that the function of the family is. Procreation, um, sexual regulation, uh, economic and psychological support, and the provision of uh, social uh, status.